The first and second segments of the Artemis 1 boosters were joined on 7th of January 2021. NASA limits the amount of time the solid rocket boosters can remain stacked to about a year from the time two segments are joined. So it is nearly two years, exactly 23 months. In fact, NASA can choose to extend the time limit based on an engineering review. On the 29th of September 2021, Northrop Grumman indicated that the limit can be extended to 18 months for Artemis 1 based on an analysis of the data collected when the boosters were being stacked. Sadly, 18 is still less than 23. Artemis 1 is really, really overdue. How will NASA handle it? Discuss everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Since assembly began on NASA's Mega Moon rocket, a clock has been ticking on just how long the Space Launch System rocket can stay on this Earth before the space agency needs to make requests to extend safety deadlines in place on the Moon rocket hardware. Like most things in life, rocket parts also have an expiration date. As NASA prepares for the third Artemis 1 launch attempt in November, there are some upcoming lifespan milestones the space agency will have to watch. Many of the deadlines on the SLS are due to wear and tear. Weighing about 5.75 million pounds, the SLS has been fully stacked with the Orion spacecraft since October 2021. In addition, this relates to extensions granted for fueling and solids rocket boosters. To reach orbit, NASA's moon rocket uses a core stage with RS-25 engines and two side solid rocket boosters, or SRBs, to produce 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. The 177-foot-tall SRBs, built by Northrop Grumman, weigh about 1.6 million pounds apiece and have been stacked since March 2021, according to NASA. Ahead of NASA's next attempt to launch the SLS and Orion spacecraft on the Artemis 1 test flight around the moon, NASA managers confirmed the lifespan of the solid rocket boosters is set to expire in December. When you stacked your first segment on the AFT segment, you start a clock. That was at originally 12 months, and it's currently been analyzed up to 23 months, said Cliff Lehman, KSC Ground System Senior Vehicle Operations Manager. One piece expires on the 9th of December of this year, and the other one is the 14th of December of this year. However, that limited lifespan could be extended again, said Jim Free, Associate Administrator for NASA Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate. The SLS's orange core stage built by Boeing can only be fueled with super cold propellant so many times. Initially, that number was around nine times, but after a reevaluation, NASA said the core stage could be fueled about twice as many times as the original constraint. The core stage has already been tanked with liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen fuel four times at Kennedy Space Center for launch attempts or testing. Before it arrived in Florida, the core stage was also fueled with 700,000 gallons of chirogenic fuel at NASA's Stennis Space Center in Mississippi for two hot fire tests during which the RS-25 engines were fired up. Another SLS hardware deadline is because of safety. Once the SLS is on the launch pad, the clock starts ticking on the certification of the flight termination system, which ensures if the rocket were to veer off course, it would detonate and not harm the public. A flight termination system, or FTS, is required on all rockets. The SLS was rolled out to Kennedy Space Center launch pad 39B on November 4th ahead of the latest launch attempt. Per the U.S. Space Force, the flight termination system batteries have a 25-day lifespan before those need to be replaced. NASA was granted a waiver in September to extend that deadline while the agency attempted to launch the rocket again, but due to Hurricane Ian, the SLS was rolled back into the Vehicle Assembly Building. While in the hangar, the batteries were replaced and are now good for another 25 days. In September, NASA's SLS chief engineer, John Blevins, told reporters that FTS batteries are located on each stage of the rocket, but the heart of the system is the bright orange SLS core stage. 
NASA is targeting November 14th to try for a third time to launch the SLS and Orion on the Artemis 1 test flight. There are backup dates available in November and then again in December. So this is the last chance for SLS and Artemis 1. Regardless, do you think an expired item can still be used? In this situation, it is a huge rocket to transport humans to the moon. Is NASA adventurous to reach the finish line? Honestly, even if SLS launches and the mission is a success, it will succeed despite serious problems that could have destroyed it. Basically, it will be blind luck at this point. That means this flight is completely meaningless since it doesn't actually test the system. But what happens with Artemis if SLS is stopped? Luckily, Artemis can still be on track without SLS. A few years ago, NASA considered flying Orion on commercial launch vehicles. It also wouldn't be the first time that Orion has launched a commercial vehicle into space. In 2014, a Delta IV heavy rocket launched the capsule on a four-hour trip into a stretched orbit around Earth on an experimental flight known as Exploration Flight Test 1. The Falcon Heavy rocket has been mentioned several times as an alternative to the expensive SLS program. NASA Director Jim Bridenstine announced that Falcon Heavy is powerful enough to launch the Orion capsule if the Boeing ICPS stage was added. Besides, Orion's launch mass with the service module is listed at 25,848 kilograms. Vulcan Centaur Heavy capability is listed at 34,900 kilograms to LEO, 31,400 to ISS, and 16,300 kilograms to GTO. If we have some sort of distributed launch scheme to refuel the Centaur, it can give Orion to the moon. So it is probably a good idea to drop SLS and put funds into modifying Falcon Heavy and then later Vulcan it will save much more money for the US. To make this problem more serious, let's talk about astronauts who want to risk their lives. Astronauts are always willing and able to take enormous personal risks, just like the brave men and women in uniform. This doesn't provide carte blanche for their superior officers to throw their lives away. This doesn't justify purposely building unsafe launch systems to gratify political or contractor expediency. It certainly doesn't build a legacy of steadily more routine, cheap, and safe access to space and a culture of exploration. There will always be a few brave souls willing to get on any rocket that points up, but we cannot regard ourselves as a serious space-faring nation if we run the space program like an exercise in Patagonian base jumping, which incidentally is safer and much cheaper. 17 NASA astronauts have died in spaceflight-related accidents and a few others in training accidents. Like the four cosmonaut deaths, which occurred due to similar organizational issues, not one single death happened for a good reason. In every case, the loss of crew and of the mission was for a stupid reason, usually well understood, anticipated, forewarned, and ignored. I believe it tarnishes the legacy of these victims to foist the language of posthumous heroism upon them because it cynically obscures the culpability of the people responsible for these catastrophes. It is not something the loved ones of these people relish hearing, but their lives were wasted and their sacrifice achieved nothing. So we hope that this time NASA will have a safe solution for all. Not in a tin foil rocket that everyone knew was a death trap waiting to happen. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.